And so we get to one of my favorite teams in the NHL to watch draft, the Minnesota Wild. Welcome to Scouching's Prospect Pipeline Preview. What we're going to be doing is taking a look at all their prospects and grouping them into tiers and just taking a bird's eye look at what's going on in their system. But before we do, I need to define what a prospect is in my work as well as define what these tiers generally mean. So a prospect is a player that's within five years of their first year of NHL draft eligibility, as well as not on an NHL roster more than a full season. In terms of the tiers, you start at the top with a franchise level player who is a player you have forever and you never ever trade. They are iconic, iconic level players for your franchise. You've got core level players who are very, very important to your roster as well almost as important as those franchise players, but they just do a really good job making your team that extra little bit of good. Beyond that, we have depth, which is players that are second, third, fourth line, everyday players, night in, night out. They're serviceable, they don't look out of place in the lineup, and they can serve a variety of roles. Then you have your maybes category, which are guys maybe with a lot of upside and maybe a little bit of work to get there, or they might have a bit of a limited floor and might struggle to break into a bottom six NHL role in the NHL. So let's dive right in, because the Minnesota Wild have a player in the franchise tier, and I'm leaving Jesper Wallstead in here. I thought he played great in the AHL this year. Yes, his NHL time was a little bit shaky, but he wouldn't be the first really, really good goaltender to have a bit of a wake-up call entering the NHL, and goaltending can take time to develop. I'm still a really big believer in him. His track record is just way, way, way too good for someone his age. And I think if you give him time and you're patient and bring him along, you're going to end up with a really, really good goaltender. In the core section, you've got Zeev Buyum and Liam Ugren. I'm a huge fan of Liam Ugren, and I think his game projects really, really well to North American Pro. I'm not totally sold on being a first-line elite-level player, but a really, really, really good complementary player that leads by example on the ice, and to me, his style of play is very valuable. Zeev Buyum, to me, was a steal where they got him in the draft. There's elite offensive instincts and high, high-end offensive talent there. I think that as an offensive defenseman in the future, Bouillon will have tons and tons of potential, and I think he will be a player that Minnesota fans will love. Moving down the line, we've got the depth category, and there's a few really interesting names in here. Danili Yurov continues to take positive steps over in Russia, and he's just gotten better and better every time I've seen him. I love Murat Huznadinov, as we all know, and he did not look out of place in the NHL last year. I would expect him to be a pretty solid third-ish line player with Minnesota, if it's not right away at some point this season. I'm interested in what Ryder Ritchie could be if you give him a few years of development. Carson Lambos, I think, is really riding the line between a depth and a maybe at this point, but I do still think there's a chance he carves out a role as a bottom-end NHL player. We'll see what happens with Charlie Strammel now that he has transferred to Michigan State University. I hope that it's a better fit program-wise for him. I think Riley Height is another really interesting player with a lot of skill and a lot of potential as a top-nine offensive player. And I think they have a really nice mix of talent here that could turn out to be a pretty good group of players in the NHL. And down in the maybes category, we have a few interesting players, guys who are maybe on the older end of things that just haven't quite broken into the NHL yet in Damon Hunt and Ryan O'Rourke, who I think could potentially play depth roles at some point, especially Damon Hunt, who I thought wasn't phenomenal in the NHL last year, but looked pretty good with Iowa the limited time I did see him this summer. I've always been curious about Aaron Pionk, but he's also one that kind of rides the line between a maybe and an everyone else, but, but he's an impressive player I've seen a few times, and we'll see what happens with him. Hunter Height and Aaron Kiwi Haru are high-skilled players. I mean, Height has not been the most productive OHLer, but that may put him in the maybes category, but I'm a little more optimistic that he'll find some way to work his way into the NHL, even if it isn't as a premier offensive player, but I don't think it's guaranteed. Aaron Kiwi Haru is... Just a really, really, really smart defenseman when the puck is on his stick, and the rest is a work in progress. So you leave him in Finland for a while and you see what happens to him. Where he got drafted this season makes sense in terms of where I think he should have gone, and he's an interesting flyer to take, but I don't think he's any sort of guarantee for the Minnesota Wild. As well, down here you've got Samuel Hlavai, who they just signed out of Czechia. He's an interesting goaltender who has some pretty good metrics to his name, and we'll see what happens with him. Down at the everyone else tier, there's a few names that some people might think are a little bit pessimistic, but there's a chance that a few of these players could work their way out of this group. Adam Raska, for example, has touched the NHL here and there, but I don't really know exactly what kind of role he would play in the NHL outside of a fourth-line agitator jerk on the ice, which is an NHL job, but, you know... 
Is it really that important on the ice? Well, we'll see what happens. But guys like Rasmus Kumpelainen and Jack Peart and Ryan Healy, I think they deserve maybe a look at being a tier higher, but I still think that they still have a bit of a long ways to go to get to actual NHL output. Time will tell, but I'm more optimistic than you might think in the everyone else tier on those players. But the Minnesota Wild overall are looking really, really good. I think there's a lot of potential and I'm hopeful that their NHL team can start making a turn for the better, using some of these young players they've stockpiled to just get better and find themselves back in the playoffs. There's lots of talent, lots of potential, and we'll have to see how things go. And that closes out the Minnesota Wild. If you liked the video, click like and subscribe. And if you really, really liked it, you can go to scouting.ca, where a subscription gets you early access to content, exclusive written work, as well as plenty of other stuff like a Discord server and exclusive data tables and all kinds of fun, cool stuff you can check out at scouting.ca. So that's it for Minnesota. And up next, we're gonna take a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs.